Ciao friends! In this video, I want to answer one of the most frequently asked questions about Power BI and Tabular in general. It goes like this. If I need to create a new column in my model, and I have the option of doing that in DAX or in Power Query, which one is better? You did ask it yourself, didn't you? Now, the thing is, answering this question can be rather complex or extremely simple. It all depends on uh, what you mean by better. Better means uh, smaller, a smaller model is better, or better means uh, faster, or better means uh, simple, sim more simple to create. Uh, there are a lot of possible options. And uh, answering all of them takes time and a lot of reasonings. That's why I divided the video into two sections. In the first one, I just give you my opinion and my answer. And if you trust my judgment, you just go for that. If you want to know more, then you will need to follow me up to the end of the video where I will give you an explanation on why I provided the first answer. Let's start with uh, the answer. The answer is, uh, it depends. But if your model is not really huge, it doesn't really matter. Go for what you like the most. That's the end of section one. You're still there? I know you. You want to know all the details and you want to understand how I ended up with this conclusion. If that is the case, follow me and let's start uh, analyzing why this is the answer. We start with uh, the usual Contoso data model. We have sales, promotion, a lot of different dimensions. But uh, specifically for this model, we are only interested in looking at the sales table. I loaded the entire Contoso model, so it's 12 million rows. And the reason is that if we don't have enough rows, it is impossible to measure anything. The first thing that we will need to do is take some base measures, because we want to measure the space used by columns created with uh, DAX or with Power Query. So we need to know at the beginning what is the size of the model. And then we will do the two steps. We create the column in DAX, we create the columns in Power Query, and we do some reasoning in the, in the meantime. Let's start by measuring the size of the database as it is now. To do that, we just need to open DAX Studio. And from there, we take a look at the metrics and we save them just in case. So I just connected DAX Studio, take a look at the metrics, and now I have all the information about my data model. You see that the only tables which is uh, relevant is sales that contains around 12 million rows. I'm not interested in doing any kind of analysis so far. I just want to take the metrics and save them for later. So next step, I export it and I give it a meaningful name like Contoso 12 million base. Okay, let's save it. And we have our numbers. Let's go back to Power BI Desktop. As I said, the first step is creating the column using DAX. I'm going to create a new column that contains a small number of distinct values, and it's the price range. The price range basically splits the sales depending on the net price. So let's call it a price range. If the price is less than 100, we say it's low. If it, is, if it is less than 1,000, it's medium. If it is higher than 1,000, it's high. So we use a switch over true, and we check if the net price, uh, sales net price, sales, we don't have sales net price. I'm probably creating a measure, yes. Uh, so let's start again. I wanted to create a new column. Okay, uh, it was uh, price range. That does a switch over true. And if the net price, now I see that uh, is uh, less or equal than 100, then we say that it's uh, low. Otherwise, if sales net price is less or equal than 1,000, then it's a medium. Otherwise, it's high. This column only contains uh, three different values, so it should be a small column in the model. 
just a second to compute it. Now I have my price range column and it shows three values, high, low and medium. Now that I have the column in the model, I can go back to Duck Studio and look at the matrix now. So let's go back to Duck Studio. We still have it here. And uh, I can look at the matrix here, but uh, I'd rather create uh, a new window so that uh, I have uh, the option of looking at the matrix in both. So we look at the matrix right now, and as I always do, we, sa we save it just in case. This is Contoso 12 million calc call in DAX. Now, the sales table still contains 12 million rows, but now I want to get in, to dig into it a bit deeper because I'm searching for the new column that I created. Here it is, price range. Price range uses around 2.6 megabyte of space. So it's a column, 12 million values, three, 12 million rows, three distinct values. It's around 2.6 megabytes in size. Creating it was rather simple and uh, didn't took a lot of time to do that. But now the next step is uh, let's do the same using this time uh, Power BI, using this time Power Query. So first we delete this column because we want to go back to the original size of the model, and then we do that in Power Query. So we go to Home Transform Data, go to Sales, and we create a new column, Custom Column. Okay, now we need to write M code. It's still unit, no, it's still price range. If the unit price, no, the net price is less or equal than 100, then low. Else, if the net price is less or equal than a thousand, then it's medium. Otherwise, it's high. Okay, the code is not different uh, than what I did uh, in uh, our in uh, DAX, and uh, we just click on OK. And finally, we close and apply. Now, here comes the first difference. When I created the column using DAX, it was quite fast because it created the column and it was immediately available. DAX is super fast when it comes to creating columns. Whereas uh, with Power Query, I now need to wait until the full table is loaded again. I could have cut this section from the video, but I decided to keep it here. The reason is I want you to experience the time that is needed to load 12 million rows. It's not fast and it makes the whole process kind of annoying because you need to wait a lot of time every time you do a small change. We are around 9 millions, we have 3 millions still to go. And if for whatever reason I need to update the column, I need to run again through the entire process. So from the development point of view, it is kind of better to use DAX because the entire development process is much faster. Now it finished. Keep in mind that uh, uh, it's not that easy. It's not that DAX is always the best option, because if you really have a huge table, then it is very likely that you have partitioned your table. Now, if a table is partitioned, you probably always load, especially in production, only the last partition, which is rather small compared to the entire table. A calculated column will, be, will force the recalculation of the calculated column for the entire huge table not only the last partition, whereas a column computing in a Power Query or in SQL will be loaded from the server and does not trigger any recalculation. So for a large model, the choice really depends on different aspects, not only on sides. For small models, the difference is not really relevant because it doesn't take a lot of time to load from a small table or to recompute a column for a small table. But now let's go back to the size. We created the column, we need to measure sides. The thing is, if I measure the sides of this model right now, I will get wrong values. Because uh, 
Immediately after a processing, the model looks larger than it actually is. There is a good reason for that, it's rather technical, but you cannot measure the size of a model immediately after a process. So what I need to do is save the model and load it again in order to take a good measure. So I save it, and then I close it, and then I will open it again. Hopefully it's not going to take too much. So let's open it again. Now the model is being loaded, memory is being allocated, and now I will be able to take the correct measures about the sides. Just a few seconds. Come on, Power BI. Chop, chop. We are just waiting for you. Here we go. Now the model is ready. I already have Duck Studio open. I just need to go there and create a new connection. I need to connect again because I closed it earlier, so I now need a new connection. Go to Advanced, View Matrix, and expand it. Now we can start to make some comparison. We have uh, Sales, we search for the price range, and here it is, the size of the price range column. It's uh, 470 megabytes, kilobytes, so it's much smaller than the previous column. Let's take a look at Query 2. We have 2.6 megabytes, and here we have 470 kilobytes. And this is expected. A column created in Power Query is always smaller than the same column created in DAX. Again, the reason is rather technical. When you create a column in DAX, it, it does not participate in the choice of the optimal sorting in order to increase the compression. This column has a very small number of distinct values, so it's likely that it will be very early in the list of columns that need to be sorted. And this is the reason why, if you load it from Power Query, it will be much smaller. But how much smaller? That is relevant. We are talking about 12 million rows, and the difference in size between this column, 470, and this other column is around 2 megabytes. Now, when I was a teenager, 2 megabytes was uh, likely the size of a good hard disk. But as of today, 2 megabytes are just a tiny number. There is actually no real difference between uh, half a megabyte and two and a half megabytes from the point of view of the speed of querying this column. So I do not expect any difference at all in the, the speed of query of this column. Besides, there is another uh, important factor that you need to take into account. We looked at the price range column. Let's look at the other columns, for example, the order number columns. In the new model, the last one that I created, where the column has been created using Power Query, it's 82 megabytes, the size of the order number. In the model that, con that was created earlier, so the one with the calculated column, is 80 megabytes. So the two megabytes that we waste we waste on the calculated column, we are now using the two megabytes that <clears throat> we saved on the calculated column, we basically move them on another column. Again, the reason for this is again technical. Whenever you add the columns to your table, the sort order of the table being loaded is likely to change. And again, because this column has a very small number of distinct values, it comes very early in the sorting. So it changes the sort order of all the other columns. This way, changing the size of all the other columns. Therefore, you cannot just add look at one column and conclude that uh, that column is smaller, therefore the model is better. You need to look at all the columns and take some and reason on top of them in order to make sure that the columns that you use the most are the mostly optimized. So don't fall into the trap of thinking that optimizing one column is always good. The entire model needs to be optimized. Moreover, we are not yet done. Let's look at the total size. The total size of the model with the cal without calculated column is 173 megabytes. With uh, the calculated column, it's 175, so 2 megabytes more, the calculated column, we knew that. And uh, the model with the column computed uh, in Power Query is, again, 
2 megabytes more. Again, same consideration. Did we really save space? It's hard to tell whether the calculated column using Power Query is better or it's worse. The overall size of the model is nearly the same. The individual column is smaller, but uh, the space that we saved on that column has been moved into all the other columns, so we made some other columns worse. It's not enough to reason on top of one column. When you need to optimize a model, you need to look at the entire model and check that you are actually obtaining your goal. Besides, it's very important that you focus on these two megabytes. It's neglectable, it's not important at all. There are no differences. It makes a difference if instead of having 12 million rows, you have uh, 10 billion rows. There, the difference is important. But if that is the case, you will not just uh, look at one column, you will try to super optimize everything. Finally, it is very important uh, that you focus on the fact that if you have a very large model, Optimizing uh, the place where you load the column is not uh, the most important thing to do. You need to focus on cardinality, you need to focus on other aspects, uh, data types, uh, cardinality, number of distinct values, size of relationships, a lot of other aspects which are much more relevant. That is why we go to the conclusion of uh, all this. Is it better to create the column in Power Query or in DAX? it actually does not really matter. First, it depends. It depends on what you mean by better. The overall size does not change by a lot. Yes, the single column size might change, but overall the model does not change in size by a lot, at least in this specific scenario. You might find different uh, uh, results uh, looking at uh, your model, but you need to run through the entire process. The reasoning that you do in choosing whether to compute something in DAX or in Power Query is more about uh, partitioning, the, need, the time that you need to refresh your model, the option of doing that in Power Query or in SQL or in DAX, and the kind of calculated columns. There are calculated columns that are super easy to compute in DAX and extremely complex to compute in Power Query or in SQL. Then, for that column, you go for DAX, but you need to take into account that there are drawbacks. So the answer is really it depends, not only on where you compute the column, but on the overall effect that this has on your entire model. And it does not really matter. The net result at the end does not depend on where you compute that column. It depends on other factors that you need to take into account. Enjoy, DAX! Mm -hmm.